Hello and welcome to the BMC Quick Course Series. My name is Val Garza and I'm a software developer based in Houston, Texas. In this session, I'll show you how the new Dynamic Trace facility introduced by MainView for DB2 can be utilized. Let's first navigate to the Easy DB2 view with a context of VXG DEGQ. VXG DEDQ is an alias of the DB2 SSID DEGQ. MainView DB2 allows for using the alias name of the DB2 SSID as a context. Let's continue to the dynamic trace feature by taking the hyperlink under component features DB2 if kid traces. We can also navigate to the dynamic trace feature from the Easy DBA view. Note that you can also find information for the dynamic trace under the What's New hyperlink. The Dynamic Trace facility can be used to trace DB2 IFKIDs by category or individual IFKID. This new feature requires MainView DB2 version 11.1 .1 or higher as well as the MainView for DB2 slash DC version 11.1 .1 as well. The DynCT view shows the current traces and their status. Note that this view is only allowed in target mode with a specific DB2 context. To start a new dynamic trace, hyperlink on the DynST field. This will display the start trace screen. Let's take a look at the options for the start trace request. The start trace screen will show the current context, data collector name, and its status. The TSO user ID is attached to the start trace request. The start stop times are allowed as well as the trace description, filter by qualifier, and multiple DB2 targets. Let's continue with the start trace request by looking at the IFKID selection screen. DB2 IFKIDs are required to be selected either by a category or by specifying individual IFKIDs with a Y in the selection field. In this case, we are selecting the IO and SQL categories which correspond to with the listed DB2 IFKIDs. The record limit field is set to unlimited by default and should be considered to avoid collecting too many DB2 IFKIDs in the data collector. If the individual IFKIDs field is chosen, the user is allowed to enter up to 30 IFKIDs for the start trace request. Once the IFKIDs are selected, pressing enter will now display the filter by qualifier screen and or the multiple DB2 target screen if they were initially requested. Filter qualifiers are allowed for auth ID, plan, connection name, operator ID, and correlation ID. Also, the include-exclude field must be set to I or E. Using the qualifiers can substantially reduce the amount of IFKIDs to be collected and should be considered for the start trace request. Here is an example of using an auth ID of RDHJMB and RDHJMB2 with an include selection value. All matching IFKIDs in the categories list must also match the auth ID values in order to be collected. If the auth ID values do not match, the IFKIDs are considered to not match the filter criteria and are therefore discarded. Once the selection is made by pressing enter, the multiple DB2 target screen will be shown if selected earlier. Otherwise, we will see the completed start trace screen with an asterisk on the IFKIDs and filter by qualifier selection fields. This notifies the user that those selections have been successfully processed for the start trace request. The multiple DB2 selection screen allows for starting a dynamic trace for multiple DB2 SSIDs. In the above screen, the default context of DEGQ, which is an alias for VHG DEGQ, has been specified. We can choose the DEGX and or the DECD DB2 SSIDs by putting a Y on their selection fields. Pressing enter on the screen after selecting the DB2 SSIDs will then take us back to the initial start trace screen. The selected fields will have an asterisk if they were selected, which means that they have been successfully processed. Let's take a look now. This example shows DB2 IFKIDs filtered by qualifier and multiple DB2 selections that have been successfully processed. The stop time shows a duration of 5 minutes and the description has also been updated. At this point, the start trace request has been built and pressing enter will send the request to the data collector. The DynCT view will now show the new trace along with any other traces that have been started. The above screen shows all the traces that have been started. We can see that the trace that we just started has an active status. Pressing enter periodically will update this screen and show the number of trace records collected. Note that a value of zero will show as a blank field. 
Let's look at a specific trace entry to get more details. Entry number 2 has 1601 trace records collected and has been manually stopped with the Z line action command. If we hyperlink on the trace user ID, we will see the specific details of the trace. Now we see that the Dyn CTD detail view shows more information. We see the status as well as the number of records collected and that we specified a record limit of 5000 on this trace request. Also, we can see that there were filter qualifiers used. The ifkid list shows the specific ifkids used for this SQL trace. If we hyperlink on the qualifiers field, we will be able to see which qualifiers were used for this SQL trace. Also, we can take the hyperlink on the ifkid count field to see details on the number of records collected for each specific ifkid. Let's continue to look at those screens. The qualifiers show that we use an exclude filtered criteria for two auth IDs, RDHJMB and RDHJMB2. We could have also specified any of the other qualifiers to reduce the amount of data captured. Moving forward, the ifkid count screen may also be of interest. In this screen, we show the total records collected to be 1,601. Just below the count, we can see the breakdown of the total records collected by specific ifkid along with a short description. Let's now return to the DynCT view and look at how to print a formatted report of the collected ifkids. The P for print line action command can be used to display an edit panel with JCL to print the selected trace. Once the JCL is presented, a valid job card is required in order to run the batch report. A valid job card is required in the above JCL edit panel. Also, we must verify the symbolics are correct on line 22 and 23. If you press PF8, you can see the remainder of the JCL and sysin control cards as shown on the next slide. Notice the sysin refers to the if kits collected and the interval start and stop times for the specific trace. Submit the JCL in order to run the rec trace batch report to format the collected if kids. You can press PF3 to return to the Dyn CT view once the report has been submitted. The next slide will show an example of the report output. Here is an example of the rec trace report. The if kids are formatted to show the individual fields. The QWXXXX fields refer to the various if kid fields where XXXX is the DB2 if kid. This report is meant to be more of a debugging tool as opposed to a DB2 accounting or statistics report. If you need information on other reports, please refer to the Main View for DB2 Performance Reporter User Guide under the Reports chapter. The Z Action Line command can be used to manually stop an active trace. Traces can be stopped by time, record limit, or manually. The next slide shows the status update after this trace has been stopped. Now we can see that the trace status for the audit trace has changed from active to stopped. We have shown the print and stop line action commands and of course the start trace options to help manage the dynamic traces. The next slide will summarize our quick course for the dynamic trace facility. We have now discussed the dynamic trace feature and how to navigate through the various screens. One additional note is that if the data collector is recycled, the Dyn CT view will not be able to show any current traces since that information is stored in the data collector address space. In order to retrieve dynamic traces, use the main view time command to recall specific traces from the main view for DB2 history files. This concludes our quick course for the main view for DB2 dynamic trace facility. Thank you for your time. For more information on any BMC mainframe product, please visit the URL shown here.